Okay, this is Michael Moore and I'm going over different types of conditions in which a person could be awakened at night due to pain. If it is back pain that could awaken the individual, then we have to ask what position are you in when you find yourself awakened due to your pain? So if the patient is reporting that they're in sideline position, then we're suspicious that the mattress may not be given sufficient support to the lumbar where the pain is waking them. So if I ask Kate to lie on her left side, <clears throat> and frequently the pain is existing right in the low back because the rib cage supports all the thoracic vertebra and then the pelvis has the support of the SI joints but the lumbar vertebrae have nothing under them such as the bones of the ribs to help keeping the lumbar area from sagging down. Simply in the clinic if I was to put my forearm under a patient's waist if they were in pain with side lying and they got relief of the pain, that would be an indicator that the following tool could help. So that they didn't have to go out and immediately buy an expensive mattress costing thousands of dollars. They could fold the towel and the towel would be folded into eights. And then I would put the towel under their waist and then see if the support under the waist with the towel was sufficient enough that it reproduced the relief that the patient had such as when I put my forearm underneath their waist. Different size pelvis breadth will necessitate a greater thickness of the towel so that the support and prevention of the side bending occurring and the lumbar area not sagging is very, very important. So the patient needs to play around with the trial and error of different thicknesses to see which one can provide the best relief when they get home. After we've successfully proven that it will work by me giving them the support in the clinic to relieve their side lying pain. Additionally, if some of the pain is coming from the fact that this knee is lower than that hip, then there could be a torsional force on the pelvis and the low back enough that if the leg were supported, then there would be no torsional force of the pelvis as there is when the knee is touching the other knee. So this may be a necessary addition that the patient has to adapt into their sideline position. When the patient is satisfied with the thickness of the towel that seems to benefit them, we will ask them to use a safety pin around their waist, so you can sit up please, so that as they're going from one side to the other, the waist is supported at the lumbar area, whether they're on the left side or the right side. Continuing on with different positions that may aggravate the patient and fracture their sleep. If we have a patient reporting that they are awakened when they're on their back or on their stomach sleeping and their back pain awakens them, it could be because of this muscle called iliopsoas. The psoas muscle attaches to the side of the lumbar vertebrae and it joins with the iliacus muscle in the pelvis to form one tendon and its job is to flex the hip as I'll demonstrate when I lift my knee like this. If the muscle is too tight and they're lying on the back it could 
aggravate the back by putting it, it into a hyperextended position. If the patient's awakened on the stomach, the same condition arises with the person lying flat and their lumbar spine goes into hyperextension. So it may be necessary for the therapist to recognize this muscle is needing to be stretched carefully so that the back is not injured. Okay, as we see in the model, the model illustrates a right iliopsoas muscle. In this case, Kate is on her right knee and should be stretching her right iliopsoas. Because she's stretching this muscle due to back pain waking her at night, either belly down or belly up, we've got to take precaution that the back is safe when she's performing this stretch. So that we look at the alignment of the pelvis and I make sure that the side getting stretched, the right side, is not twisted behind the left. I also make sure it's level. The other thing I ask her to do is to squeeze her gluteals so that the pubic bone rises in the front without the rib cage moving so that when the muscles stretch, she prevents hyperextension. And finally, with the use of two pieces of furniture, such as two chairs, she's able to put her hands on both chairs, or in this case, the table and the stool, and press down on them enough that it negates the normal gravitational force on her back to make it less risky for the back as she's stretching this muscle. The patient is instructed that she should only feel it on the front of the side that's being stretched, and she should never have symptoms reproduced in the low back as she does this. Depending on the tightness of the muscle is going to be determining the time that she needs to be in this position and the frequency of how often the stretch should be done in order to make changes more permanent so that sleeping in the belly down or belly up position is more tolerable and not causing fractured sleep at night due to back pain.